Hello to all. So this is my very first library haul. As a homeschooler, we go to the library often, and of course, even if I wasn't homeschooling, being such an avid reader, also go to the library very often. But I thought I would share with you some of the things that we found at the library. Maybe it's something you're studying or one of your children would like to study. Um, just sharing basically is what it is because that's how I find out. It's like I'll watch other people's book reviews and book hauls and it's because I want to know what I'm missing, what's out there that I'm missing that I'm not aware of. So the, that is why I love YouTube because I have found so many things that I didn't know existed just from other people sharing and that's one of the reasons I'm here is to share. Uh, our bird is also sharing right now. Every time, almost every time I film, since she is right in the adjoining room, she hears me talking and thinks I'm talking to her. And just She's just a parakeet. But if you hear her in the background, it is a real live bird wanting her own attention. So, obviously, the library also has DVDs. And my son likes to go over to them every now and then. We don't get them often. <sighs> Just because mainly they don't have but they have a limited selection of dvds anyway but every now and then something pops out of this the first thing that got his attention was just because this says disney but it's disney's american legends and it's just a little cartoon we'll just talk a little bit about john henry paul bunyan johnny appleseed the brave engineer and this was actually something I didn't even watch with him. It was one of those, here, honey, just go watch this while I do the laundry, dishes, whatever. It was just kind of to keep him occupied. But he did learn a few things off of it, too. And plus, anything Disney, we love to watch anything Disney. So, there you go. Bill Nye, the science guy. Every homeschooler has heard of Bill Nye, <laughs> and he is just, his videos are great. I always watch these with my son because I'm always learning stuff too. So we had not seen the um, light and color one. He just makes them funny. He, he makes, almost to the point where the kids don't know they're learning because he throws in this funny stuff, he'll throw in this silly stuff, and anytime the kids can learn something and not know they're learning is the best learning. <laughs> so we did find a new Bill Nye one, and not new as in it just came out, but new to us. And this one got a, my attention, not him, Sandberg's Arithmetic. And I really didn't read the back. We were kind of in a hurry at that point. And I'm like, Carl Sandburg, arithmetic? What, it, what kind of learning is this? So I didn't even read the back. <laughs> that it says six minutes. And it's basically just him. It's a voiceover of him reading his poem, Arithmetic. And it just kind of has like a little cartoon sketches. My son lost interest very quickly. Um, even though I made him watch the end of it because it was only six minutes. And even I was like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> We're not big, big poem people. I know that's hard to believe since I am an avid reader. But poems, I'm more into quotes than I would be poems. So, but, you know, we didn't even know that there was a Carl Sandburg poem called Arithmetic. And now we do. <laughs> so that is the videos, the DVDs that we had gotten on this library trip. We are studying right now, and I don't even remember how we got into it. Most of the things, not most of the things, but a lot of the odds and ends things that we learn is because we see something, read something about a certain topic, person, animal, place, and it's like, oh, well, let's learn more about that. Mount Rushmore is very interesting. We actually, there was another Mount Rushmore book. We actually finished it and I already took it back, unfortunately. So I can't show that one. But where is Mount Rushmore? And just one called Mount Rushmore. This is a Rook Educational Media. They have several different types of location books. Um, the Liberty Bell, American um, Mall, National Mall, this 
St. Louis Arch, which we've actually been in several times, the White House. So they have a lot of interesting good books here. And we have learned so much. I've even made tests off the books that we've read. We've seen many YouTube channels, just old footage that even contradicts some of the things in the book. That's why whenever I recommend when you're studying something historical, get as much information as possible because things will, I mean, you can't, if you see some old footage and that is the truth, what a book says, you know, that's irrelevant now because we would have learned one thing on a certain time, and I'm not gonna go into it because maybe you wanna learn it. But we, because of the books that we had read, we thought a certain thing about the building of Mount Rushmore, but when we saw this old footage, it's like, that's not what the book said, look at that. So that was very intriguing. So definitely every type of media that is out there, and of course, a lot of YouTube stuff, you, <laughs> You can't necessarily believe there's different types, you know, some are just for entertainment, there's different types, but you can't go wrong with old, you know, silent, in this case, silent footage of um, a video. So that, oh, that was just so, that's one of those moments like, oh my gosh, the books are wrong and you want to, anyway, you know how when you're learning something, even as an adult, and I, oh, and here's the thing. There may be a Mount Rushmore trip coming up in our future. <laughs> my husband and I are talking about it. And just because my son is so intrigued, we've learned so much about it, that that could be coming up, which I would be very excited. And that is a long, long trip for us. <laughs> we are North Carolina people. Mount Rushmore is in South Dakota. That's, that's a long trip. A long drive but think about it how educational that drive could be because obviously we're, we're not gonna fly this book it was actually one of those it's brand new they had just put out and they always put new books out in the kids section on certain like stands and tables happened to be walking by and I thought bioengineering discover how nature inspires human beings let me let me take you know including 25 projects let me take a look at this and we are loving this. We're only in chapter one, but the things, and I don't know how you, I'm not as strict to a schedule as some people are. Um, I know people that it is in their planner. It is this minute, we're doing this for this hour and then this and then we go to the next. One of the reasons I homeschool is so that we can go off on other subjects. So when we were reading this first chapter, and it talked about, oh, the bird, um, a problem that was noise pollution by trains going through tunnels. The solution was change train noise into a cone shape that resembles a king's fisher bird beak. So we read that in this little chart and my son's like, what's a kingfisher bird? And I'm like, I don't even know what, what is a kingfisher bird? So we stopped. And we went off and we looked up King Fisher Bird, which by the way, is a beautiful bird. My son was amazed at some of the photography of the pictures that they've got. So we went off and learned about the King's Fisher Bird. So, you know, in public schools, the teachers aren't at liberty to really do that. Their hands are tied, they're, they're stuck on a schedule. But this is why it takes us kind of a long time to get through units and studies because we get off and, and then they were talking about da Vinci so obviously there was only a certain number of things my son known about knew about da Vinci so we stopped so actually our next library trip will probably be I'll check out books on on da Vinci but we'd stopped and looked up a few things um this book I highly highly recommend it it's for ages 9 through 12 and it's it just very colorful. You know, it gets the attention of them. Actually, I only have my son read certain sections of this because um, I tend to keep, because he is not big on, you know, he is not one of these that's going to go grab a book and read it if you don't tell him to. 
So I want to make other subjects like science, history, that type of thing on science and history, not reading. So he has separate reading stuff. So in things like this, I might only make him read a little blurb or a little side box, side note, something like that where I read and teach him the rest. So, but this at least gets, it's colorful enough, it's broken up enough that it gets his attention where he's kind of reading with me silently, that type of thing, and he's curious on what's next. I highly, highly recommend this book if this is something in your child's age or something they're already into. I, I just, I, I can't wait <laughs> to actually keep going, but highly recommend. Bioengineering by, um, well, several. Christine Kirch. She's PhD, but anyway, here we go. So hopefully you can find this in your library. Another book I highly recommend, Rush Limbaugh. I know it's like, I, I remember years ago when he came out with a book and I'm like, he's writing a book? Like a kid's book? These are, and I know, I think he has like three or four, no more than four. But this is the first, because I looked and I was like, okay, I want the first one. Brave Pegram. Rush Revere, who is this character, this is his horse Liberty and Liberty Talks. Um, so that makes it fun for the kids. But this is a book I actually read to my son, which I love these pages that, you know, they even look old. Look at this. That looks like Pilgrim Pirate, that type of um, font. It actually even has drawings. I, it, it's so hard for me not to go ahead secretly and read this to myself. It is really funny, and it's educational. You do learn things. I mean, some of it's kind of out there, but it's for kids. So as an adult, you have to go, well, it's written for kids, so that's fine. But I, we will definitely read all his books because my son is not bored with the storyline. Koalas. Almost every single library trip we take, my son ventures off into... Um, the animal section because he's always curious to learn a little bit more about some type of animal. He, he just likes to learn about animals. So this one was also one of the new books that were out on a table and he's like, oh yeah, I want to learn more about koalas. So we've actually not even opened this book yet. We haven't gotten to it. So I you know, it, it just, it's one of those educational books. I don't think you could really go wrong with a book like this anyway. <sighs> this was more of, hey, honey, this book looks so cool. Let's get it. And my son's like, why? <laughs> I am a huge St. Louis Cardinals baseball fan. I love baseball. Unfortunately, my son is a soccer player and has yet to <sighs> accept my pushing into don't you want to play baseball and but this was also a brand new book and I just I was like oh okay I just opened it up it looked very interesting and actually the first page I ended up turning to um, did a little bit get my son's attention it was actually this page this page I opened up to it and I'm like okay honey now you know this is interesting and we're looking through it it is the the history of the gloves how the gloves have changed throughout history and he was kind of amazed he's like that looks like an oven mitt and I'm like yes it does and I'm like I didn't even know and I I, I have a pretty good sense of baseball history just because of my love of baseball even I did not know that in the 1880s, this is what they wore, basically. They, they didn't even, <laughs> their fingers weren't even fully um, covered up. So, and then of course, my, I played 10 years of softball, and obviously my mitt that I still have looks just like this one right here that they say is from the 80s anyway. So they also have a, the next page has to do with how the mask, the catcher mask changed, which is interesting. So if you have a child that is interested in baseball, you've got to get this Sports Illustrated Kids um, book because it is so, and first of all, I like it because there are different like Cardinals players mentioned in here, but it just, it is a really bright, colorful um a book. It's going to, it, you know, see how your favorite game grew up. So, so definitely can't go wrong. And even, you know, 
you adults out there that love baseball like me because he may lose interest in parts of it, but I'm reading and looking at this whole thing. I'm just saying. Okay, and then speaking of baseball and me, I went always go through, even though we were there for him, I'm like, I am not getting me a book. I just had that huge, huge 40, over 40 books library, Friends of the Library sale haul that I got. So if you, those are actually posted, those, um, I posted them into two because there were so many, but I did do that haul. So I have stacks and stacks of books to read. It's like, I'm not going to check out anything. I'm not even going to look for myself. We're here for him. We're here for homeschooling. But uh, the, the avid reader in me just has to go through the new, the new section, which has everything, the fiction, nonfiction. I have to. And look what I found. I was so excited. I mean, of course, you're only looking at it like this. I'm like, the Cardinals way. Well, the Cardinals way is what they call the St. Louis Cardinals. They're always referring to as this baseball club as be doing it the Cardinals way. Um, and I'm like, no, it couldn't be. And sure enough, pull it out. And as soon as I see it on the front, I'm like, you are kidding me. So, brand new book. Just came out, I think, in like July, over the summer. And uh, the... I'm speechless. I'm like, you don't find a lot of books. Uh, just has some of the history of the managers and, and the things, how they developed the Cardinals way of doing things. The St. Louis Cardinals way of, of training, of how they build their team, how they build their men, uh, their scouting effort. It just all sorts of things. I'm, I'm about halfway through right now. So this is, in it, you know, how one team embraced tradition and money ball at the same time the Cardinals way. So I know most of you are going to be like, yeah, whatever, I'm not. But as a, and it's got other, I mean, did you know that, um, did you know that George Bush, right, um, the second George Bush, when right before his father was getting ready to run for president, he was actually kind of in negotiations, kind of, um, of buying a baseball team. I mean, it's not just things on St. Louis Cardinals. There's other history in this book. I was just, I was, I didn't know that. <laughs> so that, that was kind of interesting. So that is our library hall, our very first episode. I think I'm going to go ahead and do more of these homeschool library halls just to be able to share with you guys and you know check out some of the other videos it's uh, you know i'm a book sniffer i i love the smell of books that's how i got the name and i love to ramble on and on so here you're not just going to find things about books though you will find some of our homeschooling stuff um, decorating ideas some shopping haul because i'm very frugal with a large family i have to be frugal and things things like that so anyway like comment and subscribe and until the next page